Hi everyone, I'm Daisy Victoria, and today we are going to continue working on my 1890s Frozen costume. I am cosplaying Gale the Wind Spirit from Frozen 2. This costume is based on an 1890s ballet costume. I already made the tutu in my last video, and in case you missed that, I will go ahead and link it here so you can go watch it. In this video, we are going to be working on the bodice. The bodice is actually going to be based on an 1890s corset cover pattern, which I have previously used. I created this Victorian inspired, but able to be worn with modern clothing top out of the pattern. So I'm going to use it as sort of a baseline for adjustments. So we'll call it the mock-up if you will, even though it's uh, actually a top that is for another purpose, it still works. This corset cover, or in this case, the bodice of the outfit, is going to be worn over a corset. I'm using one that I didn't make specifically for this project. I've had it for many years, in fact, and it's held up quite well. It is the right shape, so it'll do the job for this particular costume. I am fitting my corset cover slash bodice on top of that so I can actually get an idea how it's going to fit. I need to fit the whole thing and just make sure that the bottom area is like the right shape that I want for this costume, as well as anything that needs to be adjusted fit wise, like taken out, taken in, any of that is addressed. So I'm putting pins in where I want the new length to go. In the pictures from the period, the ballet costumes tend to be more pointed down at the front and then come up higher at the sides. And as you can see, this top is quite long all the way around. So I'm taking off quite a bit of length from the sides and even some from the back and basically leaving it longer in the front to give it that nice pointed front look. The overall size in terms of width, you know, fit around me is pretty good. It looks like I can take in the sides of the top a little bit in certain areas. Also, that can help me to give it a little bit more of that dramatic hourglass silhouette if I do take it in and make it tighter there at the waist. I also do have a little room to add padding to this top, which is great news because they do have a little padding typically in the bodices. That is actually one way that you get that dramatic hourglass silhouette. You can pad out the top and the hips and it makes your waist look a lot smaller. This corset cover or bodice in this case is actually based on a pattern which comes from Ageless Patterns. This is taken from an extant garment from 1891. And I had made a couple of changes to the pattern originally to make it a little bit more the way I had wanted it for this particular top. This is actually the Ageless pattern that I used for this top and will be using in another adjustment for this particular project. This is an 1891 corset cover and it is a reproduction done by Ageless Patterns based on that extant piece. I already have a pattern I've taken from this pattern and made a few adjustments to before. And that is in fact the garment I was wearing and fitting. So my adjustments will be made to those pattern pieces that I used to make that top I was fitting. You can see this corset that will be worn underneath it. Not my absolute best corset ever, but honestly one of the first ones I ever made and a true testament to the fact that it doesn't need to be the most beautiful corset ever to last you ages. In fact, I still wear it as an underwear corset to this day while I'm busily working on making much fancier corsets that I always use for outerwear. So thank goodness I've got this one around. Since I marked with pins where I wanted to make adjustments on the actual top, which basically we could call a mock-up, except it is a finished top, in fact, I am just measuring where those adjustments are so that I can transfer those adjustments to my pattern pieces. And then that way I can adjust those pattern pieces to be exactly the fit I want for this particular project. Honestly, I get some sort of satisfaction in like adjusting pattern pieces, measuring them, doing the math behind pattern drafting. I mean, you gotta be a math nerd somehow, right? So truthfully, there's not a lot of actual math going on here. It's mostly transferring measurements, which is really not that difficult to do. I'm just kind of making sure that everything is where I want it and lined up. I'm also making sure to label on my pattern what I'm doing and when I made that adjustment. 
because later on when I pull this pattern back out, I want to be able to tell what it was that those markings were actually for. Once the pattern is all ready, I can cut it out of my fabric. For this top, I'm using a satin fabric for the exterior, and then I am actually lining it with a white cotton. So I'm cutting everything out in two layers, one layer of the lining and one layer of the outer fabric. Once all the pieces are cut out, I just need to sew them all together. So there are quite a few seams in this. The bodice, as you can see here, actually does have two darts going up the front. That is very typical of bodices from this period. In creating this top, I am actually treating the exterior or the fashion fabric and the lining as one single piece. So I'm basically putting that satin on top of the cotton and then I'm stitching it as though it was just one single thicker piece of fabric. This just makes things a little bit easier and faster versus doing it as two separate layers and doing another lining method. Here's my trusty sewing machine. She is working hard at sewing all these seams together. As you can see, there are actually two machines here. One is the regular machine and the other is the serger. Though this project is based on an 1890s costume, as you can see, I'm not going for as historically accurate as possible in the construction. I am using both of these machines, in fact, to make it. Because I am treating everything as a single layer, that means that I can serge the inside seams, which prevents them from fraying. If you do not have a serger and you would like to prevent your inner seams from fraying, you can also use a zigzag stitch. Handy dandy little tip there, friends. 
And if you do want to get a serger and you're in the market, I do recommend mine and I will link that in the description for you. All right, cool, time to try on what we've got here and see how it is fitting. Sometimes it's a little hard to see because it's not really closed in the front, but what I can see here is that I'm just getting the shape together and just making sure that it goes over the corset and everything fits okay. One thing that is going on here is that it is a little bit small, so some of that width I took off might have been a little too much. That happens, it's okay. I am actually picking a few of my seams and making them slightly smaller seam allowance. So basically I'm letting out my top a little bit. This does happen, you know, sometimes your first adjustments to your mock-up are not perfect. Also, it doesn't help that I fitted a linen one and I'm not using any linen at all in the final garment. In fact, I'm using satin and cotton fabrics, so there you go. Remember friends, the seam ripper is always one of your best friends in sewing supplies. All right, let's try this thing on again and just see if it fits a little bit better. And it definitely looks like it does. As you can see here, it is definitely going to close in front. And that is exactly what we want. We want this top to close in the front. And here that big boat neckline is very apparent. So you can see how if I wasn't gonna put a drawstring in this, it makes sense that I would have put darts in that other top and we do not need that as we will have a drawstring. So I'm just kind of trying to get a full look at the whole thing and I think it is looking pretty a-okay. And fast forward, I already attached the drawstring, woohoo! And here is the top actually on my other friend, the mannequin. I had a seam ripper as a friend and now I have a mannequin as a friend. I am really collecting the friends, you guys. So you can see the drawstring is attached to the top of that garment, bodice, corset cover thing there. And it just allows us to draw in that neckline. It's a typical thing for Victorian era fashions to have a drawstring here. And that just allows that neckline to be brought in tighter so it's not like huge and falling off the shoulders the way you saw it when I was trying it on. At this point, I am just basically evening out that bottom edge because some of it wasn't perfectly even. So, you know, just making sure it looks real good the way I want it to in the end because I like it to look very nice. Also important, making sure that both sides look the same because I want it to be symmetrical. And I am binding the bottom edge with some bias binding. This is really exciting at this point because I'm getting really close to actually having a functional bodice. Granted, there are quite a few more steps left to do on finishing, embellishing, adding leaves, etc. But it's kind of nice when your garment is actually coming together and you have like one actual like single piece garment in front of you. That's super cool. So the sewing machine is going to work and she is helping me to make that happen. Here I am just folding over that bias binding along the bottom edge so that I can sew that down. 
You may note that along this process, I do have visible machine stitches. That is not something I would typically do on a historical project if I wanted it to be historically accurate. As you can see, and maybe got from the tutu video as well, I am going for the historical silhouette and making sure that it really does read 1890s ballet costume. However, I am not concerned with making the entire costume as historically accurate as I possibly can. Ah yes, time for the front closure. I chose to do hooks and eyes. That original corset cover did have buttons in the front. I wanted to do something that was a little less obvious looking because a lot of the ballet bodices I looked at from the 1890s didn't really seem to have a front closure. Some of them did, many of them did not. And I want to be able to put this on by myself, so I am doing a front closure and I decided hooks and eyes would be a good one because I could basically put the leaves on around them and use the hooks and eyes as functionality, but not something that's super apparent in the design itself. And that's really what I was going for. I was going for something where the true focus of the decor of the bodice is actually the leaves that I will be applying after I get through these next couple of steps. I'm actually sewing hooks and eyes here on the bed. This is something that I will sometimes do. I will take a hand sewing project or a hand sewing portion of a project and I'll actually take it to the bed and turn on a TV program or listen to music. I might take it, you know, outside or to another room and just sit down and relax with it. I think hand sewing is such an awesome way to just chill out and relax. It's like meditation for sewers. As much as I complain about doing it sometimes, I actually do enjoy it for those places where it is absolutely necessary. All right, here we are trying this on the mannequin. You know what that means, friends? It is in one piece and ready for decorations. In fact, it's so ready that the mannequin even gets to have arms. Look at that. Closing up the bodice and looking at it all together, I am very pleased with it. Ooh, fast forward, there's leaves on it now. What? Crazy. Look at that change. So these are my sparkle leaves that I introduced in the last video on the tutu. I got these leaves as an embellishment for the entire costume. And I had started pinning them on the tutu before, but I didn't want to start sewing them down until I had the bodice ready. The reason being, I want to make sure that the entire thing looks good together. So that is where this is a design project and not necessarily just a sewing project. So basically I started pinning them on and I'm continuing to pin them on now. And I'm pinning them all on before I sew them down because that way if I'm not quite happy with some of the placements, I can just change them like that. Here we are pinning them on again. So no worries there, the pins hold them quite well and we can just keep adjusting and see what we like. Because I chose to interpret this design in whatever way I wanted, I get to decide where the leaves go too and that's pretty cool. I did this for quite a while, pinning leaves, adjusting leaves, making sure they're in the place I want them. It's kind of typical for me with a lot of projects to spend more time on the design work and less time on the actual sewing work. And this is really no exception because putting the leaves in the place that aesthetically looks nice to me was actually a huge part of this project. Mm -hmm. 
I am putting leaves all over this costume front and back. We will be able to see the back because the hair in these costumes is up in a bun and actually has a crown or a tiara around it, which I will be making in the next video, by the way. So the leaf design definitely needs to be shown throughout the costume all the way 360 front, back, and sides. And I'm using different size and shape leaves to achieve this sort of look that I am Gale, the wind spirit. I love that Gale is sort of based on a sylph, which is a classical wind elemental as described by Paracelsus. And she is depicted with all these autumn colored leaves. So it's kind of cool that I'm doing it in the autumn as well, or at least coming up on autumn. I actually did this part before it was technically autumn, but here we are, now it's autumn, welcome. The leaves are all being stitched down by hand. So remember how hand sewing is good for your mental state? Yeah, there's plenty of that to be had around here on this costume. Some of the leaves are underneath the outer layer, so it gives sort of an effect that, you know, they're not all on top, they're actually throughout the layers. And this part took quite some time actually sewing all these leaves down, but that's okay because it's super fun and super worth it. This is the part of the project where you just put on some nice music and you just chill out while you sew for quite a while. This costume is actually being made as part of a group of several of us costumers who are in fact all doing 1890s Frozen cosplay. I will link the playlist below so you can watch all of us make our fantastic Frozen cosplay 1890s outfits. I ended up adding a single rhinestone to the center of each and every leaf. So you are seeing that here actually already done when I'm trying it on. It looks like it's fitting really well and I like how these leaves are all over it. I think it's really awesome and it looks like I wanted it to honestly. So that's really what we were going for, right? There is some room where I can add some padding to the top if I want to and that is absolutely perfect. The skirt is very, very full. This is 
really fun. I like it. Really what's missing from this costume now is a crown or tiara, which I will be wearing with my hair in a bun. In the next video, I will be making that crown or tiara with a bunch of leaves to match the rest of the costume. So please check back for the rest of my videos. I still need to make that tiara. And then I will do a final reveal of the entire costume put together where I in fact pretend that I am a ballerina but not really, so just wearing a ballerina costume. Actually, I'll pretend I'm a wind spirit or like some sort of woodland fairy, which is kind of what I always am, so yeah, it's perfect. If you'd like to keep seeing everything I do, make sure you subscribe to my channel. You'll see those other videos as they come out as well as everything else I do here. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything I post. You can also find me on social media as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And if you'd like to help support me to keep creating content, videos, and beautiful things for you guys to share, also consider supporting me on Patreon. I look forward to seeing you guys again very soon. Have a happy Wind Spirit Day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.